Good morning and welcome to Motivation Monday. Today we're actually attacking something that's pretty significant. We're going to be talking about your value statement as a real estate agent or your value statement as any kind of business owner. Right now in our industry, there is a major set of lawsuits that could alter exactly how you get paid as part of your commission. And that's a significant thing that we may have to be tackling in the near future. So you need to learn how to build your value as an agent. So today I'm going to cover why you need to do this, how to do it, and then how to condense it down so that it makes sense to your clients in a quick and easy way. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so let's dig in and get started. First of all, why do you need to have a value statement? There's a huge significance behind telling people what you do in a positive and reassuring manner and presenting your value as an agent. And the fact is that there are more agents than ever before. We are a saturated industry. This is not a secret. Uh, because of COVID, a lot of agents came into the market assuming that it was quick money, that it was easy, and that anyone could do it. So we are oversaturated. And that has created actually a, a negative effect because we're oversaturated with unskilled labor. Now, there are lots of new agents who are very, very good at what they do, and I applaud those individuals for coming in, but there are agents who take this kind of semi-seriously and who haven't, haven't invested the time, energy, and effort to making it a real successful business. So, you have to be able to differentiate yourself as one of those agents, especially if you're new. As one of those agents that is not here just to play around, but you're serious about what you do and you have the skill sets, whether from real estate or from a previous industry to really make you shine and make you the person they should use on their next listing or purchase process. So you really have to establish the why behind what you do. Okay. And number two, we really have to start talking about the how, how do you, how do you establish this? So let's start with a couple of questions. Who do you work best with? Do you work best with families with children? Do you work best with elderly adults that are trying to downsize? Do you work best with the lawyer mindset or maybe engineers who are very statistical and like to pick A, B, C, or D? Are those the people that really make sense to you? So find out who those individuals are so you can market directly to them. Because ideally what you want is the perfect mesh between the personality type that you work with and the education that you need to make sure they have a splendid transaction. Okay, so who do you work best with? Secondly, what is special about how you serve this group? There are other individuals who could work with an engineer. There are other individuals who could work with a family. There are other individuals who could work with an elderly couple. But what makes you special? You're not the only agent out there. What differentiates you? Maybe it's a story. People love narratives. Maybe it's a story about how your grandparents, whenever they sold their home, they were taken advantage of. Or maybe it's a story about um, your, ex your experience as a young child moving into a new home and some traumatic things that happened there and why you want to overcome that. So you've really got to dig deep into your own spirit and find out what, what makes you tick what makes you attracted to that individual group of people and why you can serve them in a way that nobody else can. All right, so dig in, find out who you work with and what you offer that is special to them that no one else could. All right, and now which skills that you have learned in your either short tenure as an agent or maybe your long tenure as an agent apply specifically to them? Maybe for young families, they're looking at the starter home prices. So in order to be effective, you really have to have great negotiation skills. And you had a previous job which created those negotiation skills. And now you're simply applying them to young couples who could use that extra own in a crazy market. So you've got to figure out what skill sets you have. And even if you're ever applying for a new job, that's one of the standard rules 
you have to figure out what skill sets apply to the, the job itself rather than focusing on not having experience in that individual job. So if you were a stay-at-home mom for years, what has that taught you about being an agent? You, know, you talk about managing multiple opinions and perspectives and keeping everyone happy, but also being the authority, you know, the authority in the situation. So there's so much content there that you can grab a hold of and really bring value to your clients. But you've got to spend some serious time. This is not something you just do overnight and you run out some ideas and you've got a value statement. For me, it's taken about a year to really figure out what my value statement is. And it's really education and empowerment for my clients so they can have successful businesses. That makes sense to me. It feeds into all of my preferred um talents and skills and things I love to do. I love to teach classes. I love to see that light bulb come on when someone realizes that they can do it too. And it's not as hard as they thought. I love that experience for my clients. And that's what I bring to the table because there's a lot of other title companies and a lot of other title reps, but that's something that I do differently. Okay. And most reps don't teach other classes. So that's, that's what makes me unique. Now, what I did there is I condensed it down into something simple and easy to absorb. Now, remember, people hear what they want to hear. They don't hear what you're saying. That's a basic communication strategy. Some people think, well, just because I said it, they're going to understand it. That is no go. Tracy, quiet, please. Um, but what you have to do is figure out what is going to resonate with your audience at that point in time. What's going to make sense for them? So if you talk about negotiations, that may make sense to you, but not necessarily to your clients. So let's just say I'm a negotiator, which means I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight for what you want. And if you want to pull back, you tell me when. If you're going to be that type of agent that is uh, sentimental and really helps people work through the process, you've got to tell them that story. I'm going to be with you step by step. I know this isn't going to be the easy situation because you've lived in this house for so, so many years, and you have so many memories of your kids growing up, again, hit them with, I feel what you're going through. I understand where you are in life, and I want to help. I want to contribute because I know your experience is not simple and easy, and I see the value in, in this property just like you do. But I also understand that you are going somewhere, and we can't make movement if we don't decide to make some changes. And I know that's difficult, and I'll be there every step of the way with you. So you've got to figure out what that value statement is. Remember, start with the why. What differentiates you from, I think, the 48 thousand other new agents that came into the market in the last few years. And then what are those questions? Who are the groups that you work with? What makes you special? What connection do you have to them? And which skills have you either learned in your real estate career recently or have taken from a previous industry that can be applied to that particular group and how to fight for them? And then finally, what is a one, maybe two sentence statement that you could combine to make this make sense for them? All right, guys, this is so important. You've got so much on your plate. You're fighting for your commissions. You've got to stand out. So don't be afraid to figure out what your value statement is and really sell it to your clients. Because otherwise, if you don't tell them what you do, how are they going to know that you're worth paying that 3% commission? Bye, guys.